I'm very excited to have this group in front of me because I usually I, I love talking about this. It's my favorite thing, and there's a lot of new faces here. So, thank you for coming. This project, Day in the Life of the Carmen's River, it's our second annual event. We did this uh, last year. And it's based on the Day in the Life of the Hudson River. Is anybody familiar with that event or been involved in it? They were huge with us getting this off the ground. There were conference calls, and they were so wonderful with helping us become a success. So I definitely want to give them a lot of credit for what we're doing. So this is such a great day. A lot of us in this room are environmental edu educators, and you're trying to figure out a way. How do you get kids outside? involved in real world citizen science where we thought what a great idea to have one day almost like a bio blitz or a biodiversity day where we get schools and students together to go out on the river and collect data so what we do is we it depends on the age uh, level there's a lot of uh, there's a variety of age groups that do uh, participate in this our youngest is fourth grade and then, and they do some simple activities, and we could even go younger if we had interested schools. And then we have the high school, and that really seems to be where it's really connecting, because they're using some really good data collection methods, and they're taking it to the next level. So what we did this year is there were 17 locations, and I'll show you a map, uh, that were selected along the Carmen's River. The Carmen's River is 10 miles long. Now you compare that to the Dana Life of the Hudson River, it's completely different. Very small river um, compared to, but we had 17 locations and these students went out. The primary goal, let me say there were two goals, two goals for this project, and I'm learning as we go on. There were two. One of them is for the teachers and the students. Get those students outdoors. Help them become familiar with their natural environment their backyard. They're not going to know what to preserve unless they become intimately involved in that. So you get these kids outside. Some of them never really have had experience with that, so that inspires them and that connection's there. Secondly, you use it in their curriculum. So you have these teachers, like Maria Brown here is phenomenal with that. She uses the outdoors as a, in her classrooms regularly. They can use that in their curriculum to help these students <coughs> learn. They're not opening up a book, they're outdoors and they're learning about it. Second part is the citizen science part. And that's the part that I'm realizing after this second year we really need to focus on. Because we're getting the kids out, we're getting all this data and they're doing some good stuff, but then it comes to the citizen, getting that data uploaded for us to use, for you to use, uh, to help us with environmental planning. We really need to get that some really strong data. So it is a two-prong approach. Uh, but the students, you can see here, uh, this is done in September. So this data is available throughout the entire year for the teachers to use, and they do use it. So at each location, they do different types of data collection, and it does depend on the teacher and their comfort level and the age group. So we will have some uh, some groups doing staining, and that's what our fourth graders did. Did I see Wertheim here? Did I see them here? Oh, awesome, awesome. Okay, some of the partners, I'm going to get to that soon. I have some of my partners here in the room. But they focused on the young fourth graders, and they did staining, and they learned about the river's environmental health by macroinvertebrate studies. You could get kidney gardeners out there, and it's the coolest thing ever when you pull up a scene and you have the fish and you have the crabs and you have the American eels, and they're just looking at this going, wow. So what they were doing then is writing down all the different biodiversity and species that they found, measuring them, easy stuff. And then some of the high school kids were doing soil and core sampling, uh, and they were also doing a little bit more of the data collection with the current, et cetera. And again, I'll, I will go into that a little bit more. So a little bit more of the water chemistry, the older the students got. So here, what they were doing is to measure the current, simple. You throw an orange in, you measure it, and you time it. That's what these guys are doing. Uh, this year, we had 400 students out on the river on, in one day. And it was such an accomplishment, not just you know, for me. I'm just a, a small part in this. I helped organize it. But it really 
so many schools, teachers, and uh, partners made this happen. To get 400 children out on that river, it, it was such a uh, impressive, impressive feat uh, today. So these are the schools that we worked with. We had six schools that were right along the Carmen's River. And they uh, mostly were high schools, except for Nathaniel Woodhull Elementary, which is also in the William Floyd School District. And then we had Rocky Point, Pat Med, and Longwood, and Belport. They seemed to gather data close to their school, except for William Floyd. William Floyd went all over the place. They were from the top, the bottom, they were all over. Talk about overachievers, they were amazing. <coughs> And then we had, this is the exciting part. We can't just keep it normal. We have to mix it up a little bit. And we have two additional schools that collect data. One of them is Sable High School, so we're still on Long Island. But they're collecting Greens Creek water quality data. So that way we can compare it to the Carmen's River. What's the difference, why, et cetera. And we also have a, a twinning partnership. The Pine Barrens Commission, who I work with, has a twin ecosystem in Pisa, Italy. It's a park in Pisa, very similar biodiversity, habitat, and ecosystem. So what we do is we have a whole school in Pisa, um, Instituto Tecnio Industriale, and they get 50, how many kids did they get out? Oh, it's coming up. Um, 30 or 50 students out on the Arno River, and they collect the same type of data using the same methods, standardized methods, and then what we do is we compare our data to Italy as well, being a twin ecosystem. And uh, this is all on our website. So we have these two cool schools outside of the Carmen's River that we use. So here we have, so Italy had 50 students and Sable High School had 30 students. Now I should say, I called William Floyd overachievers. I think Sable High School might be even more. <laughs> so they do a phenomenal job. They've been doing what we're doing on the Carmen's River for the last 10, 15, how many years have we been doing this? 14 years, so jump in if I'm missing something. So they, uh, this is their first year working with us. Their data is also going to be on that website if you're interested in seeing the difference in the data collection. So again, the success of this project is all about partnerships. We couldn't do this uh, by ourselves. But what, I had said this recently, this has been the most exciting project I've ever done in my, in my professional career. Because when you sit at meetings usually, you're just like, oh, I have to go, and you know, there's issues, and you're just you know, trying to work through them. Every meeting for this, and we met, we, we, we would meet probably six to eight times prior to this event, partners and teachers. It was such a great meeting. Everybody, have you ever sat at a table and everybody's like, what can I do? When can we do that? No problem, let's do that. It was literally uh, people saying, I know somebody else who can help. It was such an easy program. And this is a list of our, of our partners. What's that? So they managed to do a data lab of the Potomac River, so they can get them down. Well, George Costin is here. He was with uh, Art Flick Trout Unlimited, one of our fantastic partners from the get-go. So, um, and they've all been very, very helpful. Um, some of them, USGS is new this year. We, every year, you know, we're bringing on some new partners. USGS is new this year. We went to their site, and they had some great data. Eastern Suffolk BOCI was new this year. They partnered with Bellport High School, and they brought a technology component to it. They did everything on iPads. They had their field guides electronically. It was interesting. It took a little bit more time, but it was cool to have that technology aspect to the, to the day. So uh, they were all awesome. What, what we did, too, a couple of them went above and beyond. When we partnered these schools with the organization, we uh, don't expect the teachers to be experts. We want to help them. So they either had an existing relationship with an organization, or we matched them with the best fit. And so what they did is when the teachers went out to each location with the students, we had somebody there to help them identify species, help them collect the water quality data to do it correctly. And some of the partners had high tech uh, ways to collect the data. We used wa water quality data from Lamont, 
which I'll get to, but some had YSIs, from Brookings National Lab, National Lab, yes. So some of the schools were really lucky to get some really good um, technology. So, but in addition to working with the teachers, they would um, do programs. In fact, it's unfortunate I'm back to back with uh, DECs doing their Carmen's River uh, tagging, pit tagging, because they talked about uh, how they were doing the transponders in the fish and monitoring how far they go up the Carmen's River. They were giving that presentation to schools. George Croston, Trout Unlimited, was doing a presentation on the fish ladder, why we need it, what species are of special concern, and we had Cornell Cooperative Extension also doing a long, more of a presentation. So we had some really great uh, partners to help us with this. And here is just, again, some of our partners uh, who helped, that helped us. And then what Wertheim did for the younger crew is they added a whole component and they made more activities in, uh, available for them. So they weren't just doing the same with 50 kids. They broke it up. 25 kids are doing the same. 25 other kids, uh, students will be doing another interactive uh, program. So this is an example of our locations and who we connected them with, and the school, and the times. This, to be a success, is up to the, student, the teachers, what time works best. We don't dictate what time they go, and where they go, and how they do it. It's up to them. So you'll notice that some were out all day. I'll just point to we employed. They, were, they started at 7.30, and they ended at 2. That's the, basically the entire school day. And then Belport High School who couldn't get an entire class out for the day, but they used their after school club. And they went out after school hours and were able to uh, collect the data. So it depends on what works best. Some uh, were at, just went out for an hour, so whatever works. It's an, on an individual basis. Here's the map. Next time I do this presentation, I think I have to get a map uh, at the beginning. So here's the Carmen's River. Here is Bellport. Bay. So here's the Fire Island, uh, Fire Island, and the new old inlet is right here. And that was really exciting about this year, just to compare the data. I'm so glad we did it last year so we could see what is the difference. And so we had the 17 locations started at the headwaters. Right there, we had Rocky Point High School was our a new school this year. So they collected water way at the top, and then at, we just kept going down. We had Longwood. High school was at the Upper Carmen's and then Upper Lake and Lower Lake. William Floyd joined USGS. Gate A was William Floyd as well. Gate G was so popular that we had several schools uh, join us at Gate G. And this is all South Haven Park. So it's off limits to the general public. So it's really special that we, we had to get permitting and we went through the, the <clears throat> what we needed to do, but these kids were had access to places that you know fly fishermen only know about. So it was nice for them to really see this unique parcel of land and river along the Carmen River. And here we have South Haven Park, the lake. We had Pat Med doing some great data collection at the lake and the fish ladder. And here's Wertheim. We had William Floyd as well as our elementary kids. And then we had Belport taking care of the lower Carmen, Swasset Landing, and they had high hopes to do Belport Bay and Beaver Dam Creek, uh, but they didn't have a car, and legal aspects got involved. You can't use a student's car to go places. They didn't have busing. So they ended up taking the data right there at Swasset, which was great. That was fine. And then the matter of St. George, William Floyd, the entire school went and collected the data there. So that's our most southern spot, and it's pretty good um, information about the bay itself. So what did we provide the teachers? We provided them with uh, a lot of meetings. And, uh, but they're, they're great. You know, we did this right at the beginning of the school year. September 27th is the date. School starts September, you know, 5th, 6th. So all of our meetings really took place the year before. So we did a lot of planning. In fact, getting ready for next year, our meetings start in January. And then we go from there. So we really try to prepare them and connect them with the partners and help them. Every year we're learning, though. Every year we're learning. So we also 
that we give them the trainings, we give them the photo release, the expert, assistance with coordination, helping them with, with locations that might be a good fit. This year, thanks to funding assistance from Wertheim, Pine Barrens, and Town Unlimited, we provided each school with their own water quality kit. And it was real easy to do. Uh, Worldwide Water Monitoring Day provides these, and we gave them each school, so everything was standardized. Last year, we just said go and do it, and so we weren't getting really good equal data. So this, we were able to provide them with their own water quality tests and inventory sheets, a whole website that provided all this, uh, that re all these resources, including the, the inventory sheets. And we had extra equipment, we, whatever they needed. If you wanted the core samplers, or if you didn't have a, if you didn't have a stain net, if you didn't have waders, uh, we, this year we, we needed them to wear life vests. Who knew, you know? But we did this year. GPS units, refractometers, Brookhaven National Lab, and DEC and myself were the three main coordinators of this event. So with between the three of us and the extra funding, we were able to supply all the schools with some good equipment. And we realized how important it is to get the press out. So we hyped this up and we worked with the school districts as well, because most school districts have their own PR department. But we uh, worked well. We got news days. News 12 was out. We got some really good press on it, but it's good to get it out there. And this year, you have to put a new twist on it to get interest from the press. So Superstorm Sandy helped with that. So this year, we said the different, we could compare the differences between the two years, and it, it worked. So, and we also take lots of pictures, uh, submitted afterwards, because the press loved to see a good feel-good story. So that was it, was it was a really popular with the press the last two years. So. To have ownership of the pro program, we do ask that the teachers have ownership. So this is what they're responsible for. Busing, um, bathroom access. We say that because there's some really locate. There's some locations on the Commons River where, you know, there's a leaf in a bush. You know, what are you going to do if your child, your student has to go to the bathroom? And they were pretty hard in souls. They were fine. They they uh, they didn't really sweat it too much, but. They did want to know, you know, they needed to make sure there was a bathroom if they needed it. Um, they needed to be responsible for the safety issues of the students, tip, etc. And um, they did need to get the photo release on. So they were pretty, uh, they were very, very uh, accommodating and uh, took care of everything so well. This is our website. And at the end, I'll have it as well for you to write down. I encourage you to go on it. It's, uh, it's almost complete. I still have to put the data for Stable in Pisa, Italy. But if you want to see the Commons River, it really has a nice uh, information on it. And this area here, data, that's where you're going to find everything. So what you'll do is, this is our resources that you'll see. We just provide the, students, the teachers with some great information, um, including field guides, dichotomous keys to help identify the macroinvertebrates, et cetera. And we also, I'm very proud of providing a, a teacher manual. And you can download this on our website. And one thing I forgot to mention is that we do a day in the life of the Carmen's River. This program can be uh, used in any type of ecosystem. It could be a day in the life of Fire Island. Where's Mike? Right, Mike? Where are you? Are you here? Right? You're going to do that. A uh, day in the life of uh, a local uh, um, ecosystem, another river. In fact, we're working next month. We have a meeting with the folks at the Conic Estuary. So it could be any woodland. It could be the day in the life of Sweet Bright Nature Center. So this could be replicated very easily um, in any sort of ecosystem. So this is downloadable. And what it is, I'll go over a little bit online, but it'll help the teachers collect data, give them some standardized methods and suggestions. So. Please, I'll leave this up here for you to see if you'd like to before you leave. So, and also all of our partners, we try to give them a link. So here's our fantastic teacher's manual. We're given National Lab supplied the website and the staff to update our, we our website, and they're, 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 I love them. I don't know what else to say. So this is the data we collect when we go out onto the river. We start with uh, physical data. 
something we learned this year is instead of sending the kids saying, just go and go collect, it was a little bit unorganized last year. So this year we said, and we'll help the teachers, because those teachers that thought ahead and grouped their students to do the specific data, it went so well. So we thought this year that's what we'll provide you is suggestions to do that. So we had about five groups per site. First group, easy uh, to do the physical data. Uh, in the, so we gave them the technology to do that. Uh, the site description as well. This is where uh, the art classes, there was some beautiful artwork done by some of the students, just sketching the site and the location they were at and getting some of those physical characteristics. And then if you wanted to take it uh, even deeper, the sediment samples and doing some soil analysis. So that would be site, that would be group two. Group three, which is my favorite, biological sampling. This is what you do when you do the same net or your butt. You know, one thing that the day in the life of the Carmen's River, uh, Hudson River just focuses on river life. We expanded it and we do inventories of biodiversity. So we have a team of kids out there looking at different uh, birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, well, insects. So we do have that component to our website too. And the different habitats. And then the most um, important, I don't want to say important, popular is the chemical. This was interesting. And this was, we do require certain certain data sets, water temperature, turbidity, pH, salinity, and DO. That's what we required. Some high schools did nitrates, phosphates. They went, they just took it farther, which was great. It's on the website for more information. And it does depend on their comfort level and the, and the equipment that they are provided. What we gave them does not uh, test for nitrates or phosphates. The world, uh, the Lamont kit we provided. So they did need, what, those who did that had the extra assistance and technology. And group five, um, we, oh, important, take video, take pictures, get out there. So we put a whole group together to do that. Sal's here, yeah, I was just gonna say. Sal is our, our website guru right there. He's the one who helps us with all that. And he, I was sending him pictures and pictures and pictures, and I felt bad for him because I don't know what you're gonna do with all these pictures, but we got so many pictures from each site. And what else, what else we did is we changed it this year and we added a special component for the younger grades, three to fifth, because one thing the teachers did say for the elementary is that it was overwhelming. It was intimidating to see this booklet and say, here, we need this. And they, they were a little hesitant. So what we did is we kind of frilled it up, made it pretty, and we just gave them a sheet to list all the fish they find in the same net. And then gave them opportunities to do more if they wanted to. And that seemed to work pretty well this year. They were like, thank you so much. It was separate from that main high school group, and they really did prefer it. So when you go onto our website, you'll see that you have options now. You have 12 and 13. So you can choose where you'd like to go. And then here's the map. And what you would do is you would click on the site. And then. Um, Oh, so you go to 13, this is what you would do, and then you would click on the site, and the site would then be, uh, you would be able to see where it was and the school that did the, the testing at that site. Here you would, this is what you would get to. You would have a photograph of the location that the students did the, the data collection, and then you would have the information. This was before the website, um, Every day, me and Sal have become very close. We keep working more and more to perfect this website. And um, today was the deadline to get it perfect. So this is how you would see. You would see the data from 2012, and then you would see 2013's data. And it would, um, it would be interesting to compare. And then what would happen is you would do that through each site to compare the years. And as years go on, more columns will be added to that. So, any, is there anybody here that has special interest in the Carmen's River? Because there's a lot of people that, because the Carmen's River is such a special place and location. It's people grew up there and they have such a passion for it. And then the upper and lower lakes have been a real issue in the last couple of years because of the invasive species uh, problem. And then the dredging that was done recently um, to help that problem 
it's just it's been a it's been an issue. So this was great. Longwood High School is such a great Ivan Suarez is the teacher, has been doing this just like Maria Brown for so long. But he provided some great data. He's been doing this before being alive. Being alive started in twelve. But you can see the years we've been working with him on this. And I do want to say the Brookhaven National Lab has the Open Space Stewardship Program. And it's because of them that we have this relationship with these schools and these students that allows us to step in because they've been trained to use that environment as an integrating context. So they are already ready to roll to do that, to do this. So you'll just see over the years the different data. So, and again, this is something that you'll find on our website. And this is the citizen science component to help us understand the environmental health of the river. And these are some great, great pictures of the day. These are some pictures with our, our, our partners. We have Cornell Cooperative Extension, and this is one of our teachers at Wertheim. And we had News 12 there. And this is uh, Todd, who's, who's one of our uh, partners as well. News 12 got so into it that they wanted to follow us down the Carmens to shoot different schools. And so last year, they didn't have that, that they were at one for one site. This year, they kept following us from site to site. And they did a nice, a nice little segment on a, on the program. So this was the fourth graders at Wertheim National Wildlife Refuge. Uh, you can see we we not just we don't just sing, but we also do some dock scraping. The kids love it, love, love, love it. We also do a summer program at Wertheim, and that's all we do. And um, some of our fun volunteers having a great time. And this is one of the gates at Gate A at Wertheim. It's, um, it's not open to the public, so this is one of those locations that are very special uh, to be there for the students. And what's fun is, you know, the deer of Long Island is the white-tailed deer. And this is one of the only locations on Long Island, sick of deer, that were brought over for hunting purposes. So it's, they're all in um, at, at South Haven. And here's herds of sick of deer. Um, and there's some right there. They're always there. We get there at this break of dawn. So it's just getting light. So here they are doing their temperatures. And Brookhaven Town were there helping us with the, uh, helping the teachers there. And here's EG. This is where they're speaking right now. This is EEC, and they're, they're talking right now in Berkner A about their, their presentation. Too bad we didn't plan it a little better to see both. And they were there, and they, this is um, the data. This is the Lamont Pitts. This is like William Floyd. And they collect some of the fish species that they were able to identify through these great glass housing. And here they are getting out there. Not afraid. Some of them were. Most of them weren't. But now they're having a good time in their waders. Here's one of my main partners from DEC, Ron Gillardi. And this is the, the lake area of Worth, um, South Haven County Park, where the boat dock is. And they were able to do some staining and turbidity uh, tests. And this is my artist. She's so great doing a sketch of that whole um, physical site. And USGS, again, not very easy to get there, and not very many people go there, so it was quite beautiful. I say that, although they do have some problems. Um, there was a lot of graffiti there, and you wonder, how do kids know to get there? And they were doing some great... Uh, some, um, they're getting some great help here with the USGS folks, uh, which was a lot of uh, fun. And here we are, here's Shot Unlimited. I was saying they'll do, they go the extra mile. He was doing a program on the fish ladder. And these kids were just amazed at why it was built, how it's helping, how the fish are funneled up and go up. And, and then the next site was uh, DEC explaining how many fish are at the bottom of the fish ladder, how many get up the fish ladder, how many return. It's just, it's a nice full cycle educational experience. And here's a getting down to the bottom of the bay, lots of planning in Bellport High School. And, and there's our, edu our technology aspect there. And Cornell Cooperative Extension, huge supporter, helping those students. This student, by the way, just moved from Brooklyn, had never been in the water before. She was grossed out, eaten, and she couldn't get her out of there. She didn't have a glass. So there's, that was, uh, loved that. So what's next? I love talking about this, so hopefully there'll be another opportunity for me to do so.
Uh, but really, getting ready for next year, and we are doing a day in the life of the Peconic Estuary as well. We're going to do a, a, a prototype in uh, spring. Give it a shot. We have a couple months to prepare, and then we'll do the full blown um, in in the fall. So I just want to Mel Morris, who's not here today. He's my partner from Brookhaven National Lab, Open Space Stewardship, uh, and and Ron Bellardi. But you know, it's equal partnership as well as those fantastic partners that and and students and teachers that help us. So um, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. disappointing for me, but uh, the DO was, I recommend going on the website, it, there was less dissolved oxygen going on this year. And it, it could have been the time of day, you know, and, and when they tested, but that's really interesting to go on to the website and compare those two but, uh, years, but I was a little surprised by the data that you use the same instrumentation for the DO one year to the next? They did. They did. They did. Yeah. Yeah. We do ask them to do three tests and then do the uh, the average of them because sometimes you you get such an odd number. I think one what we did up at um, Novak, we had a salinity level of 16. That's a freshwater system. So let's do it again, and the other two came out zero. So sometimes you have to double check that. Thank you. 